What is up, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. What is going on? Shohei Otani involved in some kind of gambling controversy? Say it ain't so, Joe. But this is a crazy story right here as we gear up for the 2024 MLB season. Shohei, who recently signed this massive deal with the Los Angeles Dodgers, is making headlines along with his former interpreter, who's now been fired because of a gambling situation. I will get into the details, but the original story was dropped on ESPN by Tisha Thompson. We'll hear from her a little bit, but just to quickly recap the original story and how it changed. The story did change and uh, some of the information we got changed, which is making people think maybe there's something we don't know. Maybe there's more we don't know. Maybe Otani's more involved in this, or maybe he's less involved in it, which is what they told us, but okay, the original information was that Shohei Otani's interpreter who came over to the United States with him, these guys are very close friends. His name is Ipe Mitsuhara. He was fired after at least $4.5 million in wire transfers were sent from Shohei's bank to a bookmaking operation, which evidently is an illegal gambling operation in Southern California. And apparently Ipe was big into gambling, incurred massive debts, owed money to this bookmaking operation in Southern California was ran by a guy by the name of Matthew Boyer. Now, that bookmaking operation is under investigation right now. Ipe was fired. And at first, when he was questioned, it looked like Otani knew about his gambling problems and he had transferred the money himself to help pay for his friend's gambling debts. But... Then the story changed and the Otani camp said, no, 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 no. Otani is actually a victim of massive theft and authorities are now investigating. And one thing that we wonder right off the bat, was he betting on baseball? Even if it was just Ipe, was Ipe betting on baseball? Evidently not. As far as we know, it looks like it was soccer, basketball, other sports, not baseball. Just as important was Otani gambling. According to Sources right now, including Ipe himself, Otani doesn't gamble. The funds were to cover Ipe's gambling losses. So that was what we originally thought, that Otani decided to help out his friend, pay off those debts for him, didn't give him the money directly because he didn't trust him to not gamble it away. And if you know anyone with a gambling problem, that makes all the sense in the world. You don't give them the money, they're gonna go gamble it away, trying to win the money back and then some, and be able to pay them off and still have money. It's a problem. They have a, a gambling problem. And apparently this guy might just have a major gambling problem, uh, Ipe. So Otani paid it off for him, whether it was a good idea to send money, if you're Shohei Otani, to a gambling operation, that's a big question. Obviously, the answer is no, it's not a very good idea if you're Shohei Otani, even if it's not anything to do with betting on baseball. The original quote was, I want everyone to know Shohei had zero involvement in betting. I want people to know I did not know this was illegal. I learned my lesson the hard way. I will never do sports betting ever again. I never bet on baseball. That's 100%. I knew that rule. We have a meeting about that in spring training. Then the story changed. Otani's camp came out and said, whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, actually, Otani had no knowledge, no knowledge that his interpreter was into gambling and this money was stolen. Now, how the interpreter got access to Otani's money in such large amounts, I don't know. It's not his accountant, which would be more understandable. It's not even his agent. We're talking about his interpreter. How's his interpreter getting all his money? But anyway, Jeff Passan talked a little bit about how the story changed and that's making people not trust any of the information we're getting. Uh, did something with the original story suddenly not jive anymore? This is the stuff, Pat, that when you put it out there and when there is no transparency about what transpired, you're going to get suspicion. You're going to get skepticism. Oh, yeah. You're going to get questions. You're going to get people who are assuming, unfortunately, the worst in this situation. And here to the far right is Tisha Thompson, who broke the story, and Stephen A. Smith here. So we'll hear what they have to say a little bit. You're wondering, at the end of the day, it comes down to whether or not Shoei Otani 
had anything to do with this whatsoever because it would involve gambling and baseball. Do you have any indication as to the seriousness with which Otani is really treating this situation because of that specific implication that he and his team want to eradicate? Clearly, the Dodgers get it. One would imagine Shohei Otani and his team gets it. But has anybody spoken to you about the seriousness of that and how he wants to address that to make sure the world knows he had nothing to do with gambling on the sport whatsoever, even though Mitsuhara claims that he never bet on baseball? There's a lot of questions right now, Stephen A., and, and those are very, very good questions, and that's what we are trying to get to the bottom of. We've obviously been asking Major League Baseball, Dodgers, anyone connected to this that has... Um, control over investigations and punishment, okay, what happens? I will tell you, we have sourcing that says that Major League Baseball is following closely what's coming out of um, that U.S. Attorney's Office. To, it, it, they're, uh, I, I'm paraphrasing, they're following the lead, let's say, of the, of the federal investigation. They want to know what's going on there. The Dodgers pointed out uh, someone connected with the Dodgers organization uh, pointed out to me that this happened, and of course we knew this, this happened when Otani was playing with the Angels. Yeah, Dodgers are Dodgers. Like, no, no, no. He wasn't with us when this happened. Like, Dodgers had to make sure to point that out. This was back when he was with the Angels. So already that's just kind of saying the Dodgers are trying to distance themselves as much as possible right off the bat and note that this happened when Otani was with the Angels. And yeah, lots of questions right now remain unanswered, but, you know, was the original story true? The original story made a lot of sense, but all of a sudden they, I feel like there was panic in the Otani camp and like, no, we got to, we got to remove ourselves from this. We got to remove all knowledge. And now Shohei Otani suddenly knew nothing about this, which of course people are having a hard time believing that he kn knew nothing. It's not hard for me to believe that Otani didn't gamble and it wasn't a gambler and he was helping pay off his friend's debt, but Sending money like that to an illegal bookmaking operation, could Otani get in trouble for that legally? Maybe not even baseball-wise. Maybe, you know, he wasn't betting on baseball, but legally, could he be in trouble for that? Could that be the whole deal? Even though you're innocent from a certain perspective in that you're just trying to pay your friend's debts, but still, it might be illegal to send money like that to an illegal bookmaking operation. I would think it would be, even if you have a good excuse prosecutors want to you know come down on you they can come down on you but let's go let's move on um but yeah that's the conversation right now because let's not forget you know this i know this but i want to make sure people understand otani is the highest paid player of all time in north american sports yeah. he was offered and signed a 700 million dollar contract in december for 10 years with the dodgers well, he's a big deal for that reason and a lot of others because he's, I mean, shoot, he's the modern-day Babe Ruth in a lot <laughs> yeah. of people's eyes. But I, I got to say mm. this. I, I got to say this on behalf of, uh, of just the average person watching. So are they trying to say to us that an interpreter had access to his account that would enable him to get an additional $3.5 million out of that account and I, I promise you, I didn't. I didn't watch this clip before recording this. I, that's, I thought the same thing. How, how's an interpreter? How's an interpreter getting that kind of access to 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 that much money? Makes no sense at all. I'm not talking about a couple hundred bucks that he you know took out of his wallet. I'm talking about millions. So that is a really interesting point right there, Stephen A. Smith. I thought the exact same thing. But uh, a lot of people not trusting this entire situation. Here's a tweet. Major League Baseball is covering for Otani. This should be the biggest story in baseball, and it will disappear. The story doesn't make any sense. Let's see how many real reporters there are out there. Will any take the risk and ask the real questions? I doubt it. The fact that the Dodgers are getting zero blowback for protecting Otani from getting questions tells you everything. Um, yeah, how does a bookie allow a translator $4.5 million of credit to bet with? That's an interesting point. That apparently was made by John Boy. You can't just bet whatever you want in these bookmakers. They got to make sure you're good for it. 
Now, I guess Otani's name was behind it. Maybe the, that's the question. Was Otani involved? Were they betting together in some way, shape, or form? But even if they were, they didn't bet on baseball. So Otani might not get in trouble from a Major League Baseball perspective. But still, we're talking about an illegal bookmaking operation. Brian D. Fuller, oh yeah, sure, he didn't bet on baseball. He's different. So some people are not believing this at all. John Heyman came really hard. Nothing's been proven and we need to know much more. But here's the best case. Otani, all-time baseball genius, is a financial dimwit, not to mention a poor judge of character. Damn. So, you know, I mean, I can't go all, all there. These guys have been friends. They came over together. You know, they could have been friends for years before this guy started getting into gambling and you don't just turn your back and say, dude, I'm out. I mean, maybe that's the smart thing to do, but that's that's not human behavior. If you have your good friend there and he's getting into trouble, you try to help your friend, you know. So, you know, it's hard for me to call him some of these things. I think that uh, we have to know all the information, the whole situation, and, and an investigation is going down, but I'm not going to jump to conclusions. I hope that Otani had nothing to do with you know, this illegal gambling uh, other than trying to maybe help his friend. But now they're saying it was stolen. I don't know if I believe that, but we're going to have to wait for more information. But it definitely looks really weird that the information is changing. And yes, Otani, with the kind of money he has, he has accountants. He has business managers. Wouldn't they see this? Wouldn't they know about this? Nothing makes sense from a financial perspective. This whole situation. And, you know, don't, you know, think people are stupid. You know, the Otani camp coming out saying, no, he was just stolen from and think everyone's just going to assume that, oh, what a terrible, uh, what a terrible friend, what a terrible uh, interpreter to go steal all his money. And Otani is just completely in the clear. I hope Otani, you know, I don't think anything's going to happen, to be honest. Shohei Otani is an absolute superstar right now. And uh, I think he's a good guy. I don't think He's gambling personally, and I don't think he meant for any of this to happen, but that doesn't, you know, prosecutors don't always feel the same. So I'm, I'm worried about him from a legal perspective more than a baseball perspective. As far as we know, nothing was bet on baseball. Not even the interpreter was betting on baseball, much less Otani. So I'm not really worried about it from a, a Pete Rose baseball perspective. I'm worried about it from a legal perspective. So we'll wait and see what goes down, but let me know your thoughts down in that comment section below. This is unfortunate that this is going down right now. And I'm a Giants fan. I don't I don't root for this kind of stuff to happen. You know, and I kind of feel bad for Dodgers. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Like, Dodgers fans, every time y'all get a big free agent, there's a massive scandal story and uh, controversy that follows. You know, even Freddie Freeman with the whole deal with leaving Atlanta. Obviously, the Trevor Bauer saga. Now you got Otani. Otani, nothing could go wrong. Otani's a great dude. Nothing can go wrong. And then this. So let me know what y'all think down below. We just got to wait for more info, but I'll keep y'all posted best I can with my thoughts on it. Obviously, you know, I'm not, um, you know, I don't, I'm not no insider, so um, I can't really provide any brand new information, just my own perspective on it. And, and, and I personally can see having a friend who gets deep into gambling. I have for, had friends. I've had family. I know people who have gambling issues, have lost big money. I mean, I like gambling. I like going to casino on the rare occasion. But I know how to completely control myself and look at it as just pure entertainment and not just go wild and lose all my money and just, you know, but some people don't have that kind of control and um, they need help. You know, it's, it's hard to just turn, turn your back on them. So anyway, let me know what your thoughts are down below and we'll talk to you in the next video.